Uh, hi everyone, today I want to look at a, an equivalent resistance problem. So here's the problem here, I have those two points A and B denoted here, and in between those two points A and B I have a network of 12 resistors. Now the resistors are combinations of resistors in parallel and in series, so we're going to apply the tools in order to simplify these 12 resistors into one equivalent resistor. All right, let's go see how we set this problem up. Again, I'm going to assume that all the resistance values are going to be the same thing and they're all gonna be just the value R. And I'll be able to simplify this network into one equivalent resistor. All right, let's set it up. All right, I wanna first look at this problem here and look at the overall symmetry of this problem because if you look at what I've highlighted here in this dashed box, you're gonna notice that this pattern over here kind of repeats itself. I mean, it's kind of rotated a little bit, but really whatever, whatever is in this dash box is kind of the same thing as, as this part over here. And it's also the same part as what's down over here. It's just rotated, but it's the same overall component, right? So if we're able to simplify what's in that dash box, we can also simplify what's in those other circled areas. So let's go and just look at this area over here, which I've represented here on the right-hand side. Okay, so this is what we have down over here. We have a point over here and a point over here. And I want you to first look at this top branch over here. Imagine there is a current here flowing in this direction. That current I would have to flow through this resistor. And then well, once it reaches the top, it really is going to continue and flow through the second resistor. So that means what we have over here is that both of these resistors here have to be in series with each other. So I can simply simplify both of those. That means that the equivalent resistance of this upper branch over here has to be simply R plus R because they are in series with each other. Therefore, you're left with 2R. Now, if you go back and we redraw this picture over here, this is what we have. We now have a resistance, and I'm going to plot the 2R resistance. Let me just plot it over here, something like this. A little sloppy, but that's okay. And then here I'm going to have this other point, which is all the way down over here. And I still have my blue resistance, which is kind of on this diagonal over here. So let's go ahead and redraw this one. Okay, so I've done quite a lot of work already. And I know that this one here is 2R. I've simplified this bit. And the first one I haven't changed, this is still an equivalent resistance R. So now if you look at this, what you have now are two resistors that are in parallel with each other, right? These resistance, this is 2R and R, are simply in parallel with one another. So in order to simplify this into one equivalent resistance between these points, all you simply have to do is apply the formula, which simply says that one divided by my equivalent resistance, let's call this equivalent resistance one, is going to be one divided by 2R plus one divided by R. So this is pretty simple to uh, simplify. You simply have to put things on a common denominator, uh, which we could choose as one over two R. And in order to do this, I simply have to multiply by two for each side. And what you're left with is three over two R, except that's one divided by the equivalent resistance. So at the end of the day, you simply have to take the reciprocal of this. So you get that R equivalent one is simply equal to two R divided by three. All right, so that means that everything here in this dashed box can be simply represented by 2R divided by 3. So now we're going to use this in order to simplify the rest of the network because that means everything over here can be simplified with a resistance which is equivalent to a 2R over 3 resistor. Everything down here in this lower triangle and in this other triangle can also be replaced by this value of equivalent resistance. So let's keep this value in mind, 2R over 3, and let's go to the next page and see how we uh, further simplify this network. So this is what we first found. We found that everything here in this dash box was equivalent to a resistor which was equal to 2R divided by the value 3. And that also means that, well, this is the same thing, right? It's a combination of series that is then in parallel with this one resistor R. So if we redid the same type of analysis, we would get 2R over three for this one. We would get 2R over three for this one. And we would get 2R over three for this one. So now we simply have to combine all of these new resistance values, which are all 2R over three, into one equivalent network. So I've redrawn my original circuit now. 
And instead of drawing all of those triangles with those, each one having three resistance values, I'm simply now replacing those values with their equivalent resistance values. And now all we have to do is simply look at this simplified network. What we have here are two resistors. Let's look at this top portion over here. Both of these are simply in series with each other, right? So this is pretty simple to simplify. That means the equivalent resistance inside my red box over here, I simply have to add those values together. So you get 2R over 3 plus 2R over 3, uh, which gives me 4R over 3. Well, guess what? I'm going to have the exact same value down over here. I'm going to get an R equivalent for that lower segment, which is also equal to 4R over 3. All right, we're down to one last step now. All we have to do is simply combine both of these guys. Remember, both of these resistance values are now in parallel with each other. So since they're in parallel, we should simply apply our formula for parallel resistors and get one total equivalent resistance for this problem. Last step in our problem now is simply to combine both of these equivalent resistors for the complete upper branch here, which was 4R over 3, and the lower branch, which was ended up being the same just from the symmetry of the problem. And now all we have is 1 over R equivalent. And it's really total now, right? This is the last step is going to be 1 over, let's just write it out first, 1 over R equivalent for this top branch. And again, plus 1 over R equivalent from the bottom branch. But keep in mind, these are the exact same values, right? So therefore, it's really simply 2 times whatever R equivalent from one of those branches, right? Since they're the exact same value. So we're simply going to get 2 divided by 4R Instead of dividing by 3, I'm just going to multiply by 3. And this is 1 over R equivalent. I just write total like this. Okay, so the last step now, uh, you can simplify this a little bit. I can factor out a 2, and I'm left with a 2. So the last step here is simply take the inverse of this. So we get that my equivalent, R equivalent, which I called R equivalent total, at the end of the day is simply going to be 2R uh, divided by 3. Okay, so that was kind of a nice problem that you have to combine resistors in series and parallel. And at the end, we should get 2R divided by 3. If the value of the resistance was example 10, well, we can easily calculate that. It would be 20 over 3. All right, very, very straightforward.